In this section, section 1.1.5, we'll be looking at the length of a vector. So to start, let's try to use our intuition and our knowledge of two and three dimensional space to try to figure out how we could define the length of a vector using its components. So here's a vector V, I've sketched it for you already. Um, it's the vector minus two, three. Let me draw this triangle. Now, if you notice this triangle, which let me do it, is a right triangle with one side V and the other side, well, on this one, I have something of length three and on this side, I have something of length two. And so if I use the Pythagorean theorem on that triangle, I'll have that the length of V squared is, well, the length of one side squared plus the length of the other side squared. And so I get 13. And so the length of V itself is square root of 13. I want to come up with a formula for this. So let me write it in a different way. The length of V, if you remember where we got it from, it was square root coming from getting rid of the square that I have over here, square root of three squared and two squared. Let me put the two first and the three second. And really, I can even put a minus if I choose to right here. So I have minus two squared plus three squared, minus two squared plus three squared. I have a minus two and a three right there. So one thing to notice here is those pink elements here, those are just the components of V. Let's see if this works in R3 as well. If it does, then our intuition has given us a formula for the length of any vector. All right, so here's a vector in R3, vector four minus five, six. All right, so now we're in R3. Let me sketch that vector in blue. If I start at the origin, I should end up at the opposite corner of this box. So this is W. I want to know how long that arrow is. I want to use Pythagorean, but I can't use it on a box. I can use it on triangle. So let me start slowly. Let me look at this side is four. And this side is five. So I have a triangle right here. It's a right triangle because that four is on the x-axis, that five is parallel to the y-axis and the axes are perpendicular. So it's a right triangle. So let me start with that. I have in black, something whose length is yet unknown. I have four and I have five here and I have this right triangle. So let's call this length C. What I know is that C squared is four squared plus five squared, which is um, 16 plus 25, 41. And so C is root of 41. All right, so that black line is flat on the ground and then I want to go up from it. So let me use, let's use purple. I want to go up six unit right here. Well, there's a second right triangle here because something flat on the ground and something going straight up, that's perpendicular as well. So let me draw a perpendicular sign here and I'll put um, that triangle. I'm using color so that you can see what triangle I want. So this is W. 
um, C that we found just before is right here. So that's root of 41. And then we have our new edge that we haven't used yet in a triangle, um, which is length 6. And this is a right triangle. So that means, if I use the same logic as before, um, the length of W is 6 squared plus root of 41. Actually, let me write it in the opposite order. That will fit nicely in a second. So root of 40, root of 41 squared plus 6 squared. So I'm getting 77. 41 plus 36. And so the length of W should be root of 77. All right, and if we check where we got it, uh, we have our 6 squared. That's good from right here. That we like. And then root of 41, the 41 comes from these squared. So it's 4 squared, and I'll put a minus just so it matches the component nicely. And so these, um, bu 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 these right here give me this part. And so together what I'm getting is, again, the components of W. All right, and you can see that this will work for any dimension as long as the axes are perpendicular, which they are. And so we're ready to define what the length of a vector in Rn is. So this is definition 1.1.7. If I have a vector v, v1, v2, vn, any vector in Rn, then the length or the magnitude or the norm, these three words right here, are interchangeable, length, magnitude, and norm, is going to be, and here's the symbol for it, it's like an absolute value, but a double one. So one line for real numbers, two lines for vectors. It's going to be square root of the sum of the components squared. Sorry, this is a bit in the way. just to make sure you can see this nicely. There we go. So all of that work of doing in the 2D picture and the 3D picture was to get this formula for the norm of a vector. We'll call the vector V a unit vector if its length is 1. So all the vectors of length 1 are called unit vectors. 